enemy wants to take your prosperity, but then he wants to take your posterity. So the word posterity means your future or your succeeding generations, your legacy, something handed down from a predecessor, your seed or that which comes after you. In other words, your kids, your grandkids, what you've sown into, what you've built, what you've developed, what you've grown, your business, your, your, your ministry, your assignment, the things that the enemy is coming after. He doesn't want, just want your money. He wants everything that's going to follow after you. Psalms 145 verse 4 says, One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. So let's read out of 1 Samuel chapter 30. And this is the story of the Amalekites at Ziklag. 1 Samuel 30, starting in verse 1, it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, remember the robbers, the spirit of robbery, had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacking Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away. They made them slaves, and they went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. This is exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants to take captive our marriages. He wants to take captive our children. And he wants to take captive our generations. Am I telling the truth? Then David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Let me tell you, you can lose money and it can grieve you. But if you lose family, if you have a breach in your family relationship, if you lose your kids to the world, if you lose your, your grandkids that are out serving the devil when they were serving God, I'm telling you, there's no greater pain than to see the enemy come in and rob from our families. And they wept until there was no more power to weep. And David's two wives, men, you only need one. <laughs> David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, Selob. Y'all, man, I'm telling you, you really only need one, okay? And Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people are now talking about stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here. The ephod was used to hear the voice of God. And let me tell you, David needed to hear the voice of God. When your family's being attacked, when your kids are under attack, when your family's under attack, you need to hear the voice of God. And I'm telling you that there's no substitute for getting hold of a word of God and taking that voice of God and start warring with that voice over your children, start warring with that voice over your grandchildren, start warring with that voice over the things that God has blessed you with and given to you. Hear the voice of the Lord. The Isaiah 30 verse 31 says, the voice of the Lord shatters the enemy. The voice of the Lord is powerful. We need to understand that when the voice of the Lord comes to us at our time, our moment of crisis, we've got to rise up and we've got to contend. He says, please bring the ephod. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him saying, pursue for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, everybody say, without fail, recover all. Come on, without fail. That means we're, we're going to recover what belongs to us, every bit of it. We're going to recover our kids. We're going to recover our grandkids. We're going to recover the destiny, the purpose on our family. We're going to recover the destiny and the purpose on our marriages. We're going to recover the destiny and purpose on all the things that God has called us to. And no enemy can come against us. Amen? Listen, it's one of the core values of this church, family. Building strong relationships and healthy families. You can go to the next screen. Building strong relationships and healthy families that reproduce the living principles of the kingdom of God from generation to generation. But I'll tell you, the enemy is always working hard to destroy godly marriages and to disconnect the generations. We can talk about Dealing with the spirit of robbery to take back our stuff. But let me tell you, this is the heart of God right here. He wants us to fight to take back our marriages. Look at what it says in Nehemiah chapter 4. You can go to that slide. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14 says, 
And I looked and arose, and this is when they're rebuilding uh, the wall around the city of Jerusalem after they've come back from captivity. It says, and I looked and arose, and I said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. You want to know the word of the Lord right now? We got to stand up and fight. Come on. We got to fight for our marriages. We got to fight for our kids. We got to fight for our generations. We got to fight for the destiny that's on them. Some of you have prodigals. Um, I want to read you this, this statement by Winston Churchill, a great leader from the British Empire during the Second World War. He said this, he said, one of the signs of a great society is the diligence with which it passes culture from one generation to the next. This culture is the embodiment of everything the people of that society hold dear, its religious faith, its heroes. When one generation no longer esteems its own heritage and fails to pass the torch to its children, it is saying, in essence, the very foundational principles and experiences that make the society what it is are no longer valid. This leaves that generation without any sense of definition or direction, making them the fulfillment of Karl Marx's dictum, a people without a heritage are easily persuaded. Do you want to know what's going on right now? You want to get an understanding of what's going on right now? They're trying to destroy the heritage of this nation and of generations because a people without a heritage are easily persuaded. What is required when this happens and the society has lost its way is for leaders to arise who have not forgotten the discarded legacy and who love it with all their hearts. They can then become the voice of that lost generation, wooing an errant generation back to the faith of their fathers, back to the ancient foundations, and back to the bedrock values. If you want to be one of those, I want you to stand to your feet today. Come on. We are not going to just go away. Come on, we're going to fight for our marriages. We're going to fight for our generation. We're going to fight for our nation. I'm telling you that this is a tipping point moment in the life of our nation. But there is an Esther church that is rising today. There is an Esther church that is coming up in the earth today. An Esther church that knows how to fast and pray for nations and generations. An Esther church that knows how to engage heaven and go before the king on their behalf. An Esther church that is wise with our words, careful and strategic to win back the generations and to also bring confrontation. An Esther church willing to consistently make the decrees of heaven out of heaven into the earth. An Esther generation willing to fight to overturn the unrighteous decrees of the enemy and to continue to contend day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year if necessary until we see things turn around, until we see our kids turn around, until we see our grandkids turn around, until we see a nation turn around. I'm telling you, God is the God of turnaround. He's the God that wants the strategies of hell to boomerang back on the enemy's head, and we are living in that time today. Amen? Lift your hands all over this place. Father, I thank you, God, for raising up a mighty generation, God, that understands your heart for generations, that understand, oh God, that you want to see our children and our children's children running together with us, God. We're thankful, Father, that in this house, even in our own family, we've got four generations running together, God. It is such a kingdom picture of what you want to cause to happen in every family in this church, God. Lord, they may have unsaved parents, God. Save the parents. They may have unsaved grandparents. Save the grandparents. God, they may have unsaved children or kids that are in rebellion. Save them, God. Turn them around. Bring them back. God, we thank you, Father God, for generational blessing abounding on every hand, God, and you are giving us back the prodigals, God, and you are reconnecting us to the lost inheritance and the lost heritage that the enemy has stolen. We take it back now in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.